Yeah, my laptop died. Again, my Surface Book, my Nintendo Surface Book. Uh, it's just the hinge. The hinge is just, I don't know, it's not, not really an upgrade. 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gig SSD. It's really not a lot different than my old Surface Book, except it has Thunderbolt and I can run Linux on it pretty cleanly. So I'm really excited about that. This is not a review of the Yoga 920, however. This is going to be what I do when I get a new machine and I set it up for the first time. Let's dive in. Now, let me explain first, before we really get too much deeper into this. I wanna show you what you can do to speed your setup on a new Windows 10 machine. And to me, that's programs and data. So, data, well, programs, data, and preferences, really. Preferences is gonna be a future video. Now, Windows 10, is an unmitigated pile of crap when it comes to maintaining your preferences. No Windows, I want it this way, not that way. Don't waste my time. Every other update from Microsoft redecides my preferences and some things that I want to turn off, it just turns back on or I can't turn it off. Where are they taking me today? I often wonder as they waste my time on all this nonsense. Now to be clear, Mac OS and Linux waste my time in their own frustrating ways too. But Windows is probably the worst in this regard, especially Windows 10. Windows 10 is not designed to not waste users time. Now thankfully Microsoft has added PowerShell, which can help manage a lot of configuration preferences. But it really isn't super useful for the actual software I have. Uh, it's useful because you can create a script at the command line and it's very repeatable on different machines for what you want to do and generally it does work pretty consistently. Now users want it to be easier to migrate programs and settings. And Microsoft's band-aid for this is the classic, you, you've missed the point Microsoft solution. And that is they want you to create a Microsoft Cloud account. They want you to have an online account that stores your preferences or at least your background image. Uh, and they imagine you're gonna use services like OneDrive or potentially Dropbox or Google Drive or something to keep your files in sync across machines. And you can DIY that file sync with something like Nextcloud, which I definitely recommend and I've done videos on, so that you don't have to have your stuff in a third party cloud provider, you can just host your own cloud for file services. But even doing the Microsoft Cloud and your own file sync, that's an incomplete fix. That's just not very good. Over time, I find myself not bothering to do any real preference changes on Windows because ultimately, those preferences will be lost. And if you use a Microsoft Cloud account, it can bring over some of your preferences when you sign in, but you give up an awful lot if you decide that you wanna use that service. Well, Windows, I've got news for you. My dot profile on my Linux box goes back 20 years to even before I was a teenager, and it still works fine today. And just copying that dot profile file has been a huge time saver over the years. I've got years and years of tinkering in that file. You should aspire to that level of functionality, Windows. I think this, wasting users time is one of the worst sins against computer users that you can do making something that wastes your time software installers waste your time at least when you're resetting up software it's like i've been through this I'm, i know what i need to install i've already set my preferences once if i want to change it i can so that really should survive across machines that's a problem that i think that we can solve it's a, certainly a problem that i think that computer scientists can solve the only real resource that we as individuals have is time I don't know about you, but I am constantly fighting hard to defend my time against those that would carelessly waste it. So allow me to introduce the main point of this video, the main feature of this video, and one of my lieutenants in that battle for time and sanity, Chocolatey. Now Chocolatey is an application for your computer, and it's a type of application that's called a package manager. The package manager is sort of a foreign concept to Windows because Windows is like stuck in the 70s when it comes to software management. It's what the Windows App Store should be, uh, but it never will be because I think Microsoft misunderstands what problem they're trying to solve with their own App Store. So there's also the Apple App Store, which might get there someday, like in five or 10 more years. Uh, and someday I might have a conversation with you about another piece of software called Brew for Mac OS people, which is not bad, but it solves sort of a different set of problems. Oh, and if you're a Linux user, well, you know, almost all Linux distros get what a package manager should be and they get it right. So for you Linux users, you have my permission for your smug self-satisfaction, but let's show these Windows folks what they're missing. A rising tide lifts all boats, right? So here we've got a brand new fresh machine. 
there's not really anything done to it. Although we have run that script to update Windows and get Windows and everything fully up to date, it's also worth visiting the Lenovo website or your, your laptop manufacturer's website and see if they have any driver updates because sometimes you don't get those through Windows Update. But that notwithstanding, I'm gonna install Chocolatey from PowerShell by copy pasting this command. And I'm gonna put the PowerShell icon on the taskbar because, well, I'm probably gonna use PowerShell a lot on this machine. And by the way, this isn't good practice. Pasting a command like this into the command line is potentially insanely dangerous. Uh, you should only do it with extreme caution. And the reason for that is because you're downloading a file and then running that file with whatever commands it's got in it without even having looked at it to see what it does. So don't do that. And that goes for any operating system, whether it's Mac or Linux or Windows in this case. Once Chocolatey is installed from PowerShell, we're gonna install stuff. It's like, how do you install Google Chrome? Well, you just bring up the PowerShell prompt, Choco install Google Chrome. And by the way, the Windows Start menu is garbage. For power users, it's in inconsistent and slow. It's a buggy piece of trash, I hate it. It used to be that you could just type in what you wanted. You could do the Windows key R for run, that still works. But you know, type in a program name or whatever. Now you type something in and it'll fill it out, but it doesn't behave sort of consistently. It's really just a terrible and frustrating annoyance. So let's do Choco install Launchy. Yeah, Launchy is pretty cool. There is no doubt in my mind that future historians will attribute the hastening fall of civilization to poor user interfaces in software design. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the Windows Start menu is used in, as an example by those same historians. Um, the way that we talk about the fall of Rome will be how they talk about the poor design of the Windows Start menu. It really is that bad. Don't apologize for it. Let's help fix it. So ta-da, that's done, Launchy is installed. And here's Launchy, we're just gonna do Alt Space, that's the default key combination, you just type what you want. And you can get to any program on your machine pretty quick. And this may seem oddly familiar to Mac users because Macs have something really similar to this built in. Uh, and of course Gnome has something like this as well out of the box, so you know, it's, it's, it's a universal thing, it should, should be here. Now what about something really Lovecraftian like Java? Well, you want to talk about a data point on the uh, timeline of the fall of modern society? Well, Java's, that's Java. If you can, do without Java. But if you can't, Chocolatey doesn't waste your time in helping you maintain it. You want to install other software like VLC, Git, Putty, Skype, whatever? It's just a Choco install away. Well, what about non-free software? What about like Office 365? Well, you can install Office 365 with Choco just fine. And you may be thinking, how on earth are you able to install Office 365? That's, that's, that's gotta be piracy because it's copyrighted software. Well, no, you're, you're actually downloading Office 365 from Microsoft. Before it's actually usable, you will have to sign into your Office 365 account. So I guess we're back to the botnet part of the equation, but uh, there's not really any funny business going on in Chocolatey is my point. Oh, in this video, by the way, totally not sponsored by Chocolatey. Um, in fact, we don't even have an affiliate link for Chocolatey, so it's not sponsored in any which way you want to cut the cheese here. Chocolatey is also not perfect. It's actually quite far from perfect, but it's way, way better than anything else that, that I know of for Windows that does this kind of thing. Although, we'll talk more about some other stuff in a minute. One of the ways that it's not perfect and can actually be a little annoying is that when you use Choco install for Firefox or Chrome, Firefox and Chrome sort of silently self-update themselves. And so Choco can become confused about what version is actually installed. There are commercial versions of Chocolatey that offer some neat features. And one of those features is uh, of the licensed version is a program that watches for other programs to be updated outside of Chocolatey. And it's called the Chocolatey Synchronizer or Features Synchronizer, I should say. And so of course the free version doesn't do that, but uh, you know, it's not really, I don't really think that's a big deal. I just sort of use Choco to install Firefox and Chrome and then just sort of tell Chocolatey to forget about Firefox and Chrome and let those things update. But the time saved here, that's the point. And the time saved here is huge. I mean, when is the last time you had to install something with one of the 19 different types of software installation wizards and, and that sort of thing? You have to be protective of your time. This BS nonsense with the software installers is why no one likes to do a reformat and reset up of your computer. And you know, after a while, Windows is just spazzing out because of all the terrible things that third-party software has done to it. So this makes it a little easier in my opinion. And Microsoft, if you're listening, this is what your app store experience should be for managing apps. You need to rethink a lot of things. I'm not saying that it needs to be a CLI only experience for the Microsoft App Store. I'm just saying that the experience should be this robust. Users like me, and there are a lot of us, 
just want to cleanly manage both their settings and data without having to jump through a lot of hoops or set up a Microsoft Cloud account or whatever. And I know you sort of get some of these things with the Microsoft Cloud account, but a Microsoft Cloud account is a hard pill to swallow. And that pill also tastes like raw sewage. So I don't like to do it. Um, that's probably enough for now. I also want to talk someday about settings management in Windows by managing the app data profile in your users folder. Uh, maybe next time. But for now, enjoy the potentially life-saving awesomeness of a package manager on Windows that's not a complete pile of crap. Bonus round! <laughs> I know I'm already getting comments that are like, well, what about Nine Night? Yeah, Nine Night is pretty cool. If you don't really think Chocolatey is for you, well, you should check out Nine Night. You can point and click and install a whole bunch of applications and then just go on your merry way. It's sort of a streamlined Chocolatey, but you'd need the paid version if you wanted to help you keep your software up to date. Uh, it just installs and then you just sort of forget about it. Now, I prefer Nine Night strictly in situations where you don't actually want a package manager, but when you do want a package manager, Chocolatey is my go-to. And there are other package managers for Windows, but Chocolatey, definitely worth a look. And Wendell, I'm signing out. And if you want to share your Lovecraftian horror stories in the forums about managing software or installing, clicking through a wizard for the umpteenth time, I'll be in the forums. And yes, I know about auto hotkey and you can automate all this kind of stuff. But the thing is, that doesn't last for five years. So go to the forum and we'll hash it out. And I'll see you there. It's not fair. It's not fair at all.